high energy physics uh, community and this uh, event has been uh, absolutely uh, fascinating and, and refreshing. Um, I'd like to um, present uh, some work here that is located at uh, the intersection of uh, exploration and applicability of uh, the D-Wave system to, uh, to maybe a real, uh, real life problem. Um, so I'm coming from the high energy physics uh, uh, community and, and I'm at the intersection of um, computer science, uh, data science, and quantum technology. Um, and um, I'd like to indeed uh, talk about high energy physics event classification uh, using the D-Wave system. So I'm gonna do so by um, going quickly through an overview of, uh, of uh, high energy physics for those that, that don't know much about it. I'm probably gonna go quickly through quantum annealing uh, because most of you know about it. Uh, I'll go through some of the details of the uh, uh, QA machine learning uh, method that we've applied and then maybe spend more time on the Higgs data set that we prepared, go through the experiment that we've done, the results, and then, and then open to outlooks. So now the, uh, the, the first overview is, is that the, the Large Hadron Collider is a beautiful machine that is located 100 meters underground at the uh, French-Swiss uh, border next to Geneva. Um, and it's colliding beams of protons and heavy ions at uh, the high most uh, controlled uh, energy uh, that we can achieve in the lab. And what we're doing here when colliding beams of protons, uh, some of the initial energy coming from, um, coming from, from the beams are uh, redistributed in the transverse plane and then led to uh, multiple particles. And then by observing the statistics of the, uh, the uh, outcoming uh, particles, we can infer properties of uh, fundamental laws and fundamental particles. And this collision, we do it at, uh, at a whooping rate of 40, me 40 megahertz. Uh, so that is a, a big data problem that is not the subject here of this talk, but that's still one problem. Um, most of what we observe in the detector is governed by the standard model of, of particle physics. This is a very successful, effective model that can predict uh, many observations over many orders of magnitudes. And then uh, that gives us actually something that m most of the data science uh, problems don't have is that we have a large amount of simulation that we can rely on uh, for, for, for truly labeled data sets. Now one slide to actually locate the size of the challenge at the LHC um, and in higher energy particle uh, physics in general is that here in this uh, diagram of the uh, frequency of appearance of different particle from the standard model, uh, you can see over multiple orders of magnitudes something very, uh, very uh, common, like the W pro production. And there at the end, you have the Higgs production uh, that is completely swamped under many of the magnitudes uh, background. So what we have to do is very, you know, separate very rare signal from very large background. And one word that I want to say is that all of the work that is presented here did not play in the Higgs discovery. That has to be clear. Uh, this is... Uh, work uh, on the, uh, the exploratory phase uh, after the fact. Now, this is essentially the paper that we've put in Nature with uh, Professor Spiropoulou, who's, uh, who's at Caltech, uh, Daniel, a professor at USC, Josh, um, who's a postdoc at USC, Alex, who's now an engineer at DeepMind. Um, and, and we're solving this X optimization problem, or A Higgs uh, optimization problem, with quantum annealing on the D-wave. And in a nutshell, um, this is the experiment where we have uh, simulated the sample of uh, Higgs to gamma gamma production with a large uh, background uh, simulated. And we run this through uh, actually four types of machine learning. One that involves uh, quantum annealing, one that involves simulated annealing to compare to, and then one with deep neural nets and one with boosted decision trees uh, as a comparison. And uh, I'll, I'll come back to this uh, at the end of this presentation. So for most of, of you, you know, you're well aware of the, co uh, the, the wave computing system. I'm not gonna go through this in, in much detail. All the results are, were made from the, uh, the, the D-Wave 2X um, that we had uh, uh, access to through USC. And uh, for the slides to make sure that, uh, that uh, for those who, uh, who could be confused, uh, and, and sometimes I am, um, now, we're not talking about quantum circuits, uh, but really quantum annealing that, uh, that we can do with, with the D-Wave. Um, and, yeah, um, and then the one slide on quantum annealing for 
those uh, who uh, don't remember it well, um, where we start from a trivial uh, ground state of a trivial Hamiltonian and, and we evolve the system into our desired Hamiltonian and then the uh, theorem, uh, the Abedic theorem says that, uh, that we're gonna start, uh, stay in the, uh, in the ground state all the way through and then essentially we end up in, in, uh, in, uh, in the ground state of the uh, desired Hamiltonian. Now, what the, uh, the, 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 the wave solves here is um, this Ising model where you have uh, only uh, this, uh, this Hamiltonian running through the adjacent qubits um, of, of, the, uh, of the, the graph of the hardware, uh, which is uh, like this, and then essentially it's a six to six uh, or five to six, depending on the, uh, the edges uh, of the graph, um, connected graph, and then it's not a fully connected graph, while we actually would like uh, for, a, uh, for the uh, quantum, um, for the machine learning problem, uh, we'd like a fully connected graph. So this is uh, done by model embedding, and, and, and those are uh, probably, uh, technical slice that, that you're well aware of. Um, essentially what we do for the D-Wave and then to create a fully connected network is to strongly couple uh, qubits of the, of the, of the system um, and they're tightly coupled so that they look like a single, a single spin and they have to flip all together um, like this, uh, which means that the, 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 um, the, uh, there is an imbalance between the actual weights that we want to embed in the network and the, uh, the coupling, the tight coupling that we do between uh, uh, qubits of the same chain. Now, um, with, with the D-Wave 2X, we can actually do an embedding of 40 spins uh, with this uh, chain mechanism, uh, and this will have an impact on, on, the, uh, on the results. Now, with this embedding, we can run uh, an icing model over uh, all the qubit spare uh, that, that we want, uh, and this is uh, with only uh, 40, 40, 40, uh, 40 qubits. Now, the classification with, uh, with, with Q annealing that uh, was developed uh, by, um, by those two guys um, is, is the method that we've used in this, in, this, uh, in this work, and I'm just gonna go through the math quickly. Um, and it starts with a building of, of uh, weak classifiers uh, that are defined so that most of the, uh, uh, from initial variables of the data set, we build them so that most of the signal is on one side and, and, and the background is on the other side. And then we build a strong classifier with binary weights of um, this weak classifier and, and that, that, that gives us this, um, this strong classifier. Now, the, 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 um, Obvious target and uh, objective for 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 the, this uh, for this method is that we have a plus one for for what you know the, the signal and this is given by our input data set and the minus one is for the background and then when you uh, do the the math for the uh, per event error and the full error of of um, of, uh, of this uh, of this method where you integrate over um, the uh, where the, f the, the, the weights are actually, uh, the, the coefficients here are actually integrated and summing over uh, all the events of the training set uh, for signal and background uh, uh, together. And here we have the, this lambda parameter that will have an importance afterwards uh, is, is a parameter that is added here to penalize the uh, ad, uh, adding too many uh, weak classifier to the final strong classifier that we, uh, that we use. Um, so that is, uh, in a sense, uh, 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 what, what we've, we've done. Then we have this uh, cubo problem uh, with, with the parameters defined from the, uh, the training set, and then we embed this into a, the IZ model, and we solve it with, with the, uh, the, um, the D-Wave system. So essentially, we have a signal and background samples, less than 40 features, I think it was, uh, 30, yeah, it's 36. Um, we embed this in the SKUML and we run on the wave and it gives us a uh, mask of features contributing to the strong classifier binary weights. Um, and, and this is a continuous discriminant function that we can evaluate event per event and then decide uh, and, and do the classification based on this. 
So now uh, this is a Higgs to gamma gamma, and, and the photons, you don't see them all the time, but uh, well, here you don't see them. Um, this was de defined with, uh, um, uh, first for the, for the signal, we, uh, we generated the sample with PTIA at ATV, proton-proton uh, uh, center of mass uh, collision. And uh, the background is, is produced with a Sherpa um, with, with different class of, uh, of uh, processes for, for generating two photon in the same phase space. And we've, we've made um, a pre-selection for, for having those two photons being the same physical phase space so that the problem is hard at the beginning uh, and, and otherwise this would be uh, too, too easy to solve eventually. Um, so for example, here the diphoton mass could be anywhere and we just re uh, reduce it to the Higgs mass range uh, so that whatever event come out of this look like it was actually coming from the Higgs. And then we're gonna try to take only the features, very fine grain features of the two photons and the system to, uh, to do the distinction. Um, a quick slide on, on, on the sample size um, and, and uh, the, one of the, the uh, aspect of, of folding that we've used. Um, there is like 300,000 uh, events of signal, the same amount in, 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 uh, in background. Um, the training sets were actually uh, folded uh, 20 ways and then we used different training size of 100 events to do the training uh, 20 ways 1,500 and so on and so forth. And you will see errors uh, reported in, in, the, in, 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 the, in, the, in the, uh, the plots and there is an uncertainty due to, uh, to, the, uh, to the choice of the training set uh, that is essentially uh, the, uh, the RMS over the, the 20 folds uh, that we've, uh, we found here. Um, and then on the testing set, um, we have uh, the remaining uh, 100K of each is used as the testing set. And the statistical error that is quoted here uh, is, is, is uh, defined with bootstrapping on, on the, test, uh, the test set and uh, tells, uh, tells us how uncertain we are about the performance of the algorithm based on the choice of those 200 uh, uh, samples from the, for the testing set. All right, so for now moving on to uh, the features of the diphoton system that we use for, for, this, for this problem. Uh, those are the eight uh, initial uh, feature uh, shown here in the log scale where the green is the signal and the blue is the background. Um, and you see that initially there is uh, some level of discrimination. Of course, in log, log scale, it's always striking. Uh, when you don't put the log scale, it's not that striking. Um, this is the description of the, of, the, uh, of the features and essentially characterize the diphoton system and um, uh, of the yeah, diphoton system without making assumption of, of any uh, underlying um, uh, particle. The construction of the weak classifier in this case um, is essentially this, uh, where you have the signal in the background uh, distribution and uh, we've, we've uh, implemented this, uh, this weak classifier uh, procedure uh, to based on, on the 70 percentile and 30 percentile so that we would put the signal on one side and the background on the other side uh, to, uh, to fit into the weak classifier definition of uh, the uh, QML method. Now this is applied to all the variables, so all eight uh, first variables, and also to the product and inverse uh, in case uh, they're, they're flipped. And this is uh, probably a technical detail that I don't have to go into. Uh, but that, that gives us essentially 36 uh, variables that are uh, good as, uh, as, uh, as a weak classifier. And those are the 36 variables that we use now for, 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 for building the strong classifiers and then um, try out uh, boosted decision trees and, and, and then uh, deep neural net. Now, the experiments that we've run um, with, with, this, uh, with this data set are essentially uh, those. Uh, there is a, we've created baseline classifiers uh, to measure the performance of the baseline and then to be able to have a, a comparison uh, line for, for, the, uh, for the, the QML and, and, uh, and also for the simulated annealing to make sure that uh, we had the, the QML is actually uh, uh, what we see in the, in the device is what we expect from simulated annealing or what we expect overall. 
Now there is an interesting uh, scan on, on this lambda, the Hamming parameter for the number of weak classifier that serves as a, 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 a feature importance uh, as you move this, uh, this along, and then I'll, I'll come back to this. Um, and then one of the observation was the, the, the classification performance difference as a function of the size of the training set. Um, and then the, the, the last experiment was, was uh, on scanning uh, and then trying to add excited states uh, to the, uh, the final classifier uh, to see whether there was uh, added value with, with these excited states. So now the two base classifiers uh, for, for um, uh, reference. The first one is uh, used, used the XGBoost uh, uh, library. That is a very interesting uh, uh, outcome and spin-off of this uh, Kaggle challenge on the Higgs um, challenge. Um, and uh, we moderately op optimized the Alpir parameter, but because this guy is already good uh, as it is, and then we also implement a deep neural net, very simple, two layers uh, fully connected uh, uh, with uh, moderate hyperparameter tuning just to have a baseline. So th those are the two uh, that will be uh, labeled as HGB and DNN in the rest of the talk. Now for simulated Daniel, this is a very quick slide on, on what it is. Uh, it's a heuristic to solving the icing model um, and then, and then uh, essentially that gives us uh, a, a, a prediction of what the D-Wave would, uh, would do on, on the icing model that we uh, embed in, uh, in the device. And this will be labeled as uh, simulated an SA in, in, the, uh, in the legends of the plots. All right, so the first very interesting part of, of, uh, of the results is on very importance where essentially recalling this um, final function of the QML uh, uh, weak class, um, we classifier, um, the, uh, this, this lambda parameter is essentially uh, preventing the number of, uh, the, the weak classifier to, to come into, the, sorry, prevent the number of class, uh, weak classifier to be, to be large. Um, essentially by uh, putting this to zero, you would allow um, as many classifier as, uh, as, as the system wants. And then if you increase this number, then you have less and less classifier and then only the one that matters will come into the game, and they will actually select only the, 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 the variables that are of relevance to the problem. So we've done this where the, the, the lambda uh, parameter here is, is, uh, is set, zero is where you just like have no constraint, and then point eight and, and, and so on is, is hard constraint, and then you can see that some of the, the, the features are actually never appearing in any of the solutions that we found uh, through Simulated Daniel or, or um, with the D-Wave device, and some of those are actually staying all the way through, uh, and, and actually uh, we find out that those uh, features are actually uh, making sense uh, physically for the, for, the, for the problem itself, uh, because it relates to uh, a creation of the heavy particle inside, and then maybe less transverse energy than typical uh, uh, QCD uh, background uh, at the, in the same mass range. So it was a, a interesting uh, results from, from this, uh, from this uh, work. Now the classification performance, um, this is the results and the, the um, receiving operator curve for uh, the, the wave solution simulated annealing deep neural net and, and uh, boosted decision tree. And you can see that um, the error bars here are actually the statistical error and the spread over the folds. Um, I think here the, uh, it's the spread over the fold that dominates the statistical error is very small somewhere. Um, it's, it's very minute because, uh, because we had a large uh, test uh, sample. And here, um, the, the, the light blue is actually all the way there and there is a, um, some sort of um, uh, advantage of using uh, the QAML uh, method at very small uh, sample size. Now if you go to very large, uh, sample size at this point, uh, not surprisingly, the, um, the, uh, the classical method, the uh, deep neural net and boosted decision tree uh, go over and then, and then win at that point. Uh, the spread over the folds actually it reduces where it's very deterministic what we get as a solution of the system. Um, but still, it's not, it's not too far apart, but well, clearly there is, a, there is, a, there is no advantage, advantage of QML in this case. Right now, this is, the, uh, this is essentially uh, the area 
of the previous curves, uh, so the error under this curve, as a function of the size of the training set, where you see here that the uh, classical methods are, 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 are winning over the uh, QML, and then there is uh, maybe a slight advantage at very small sample size, which could increase it with a very uh, even smaller training size. And this was confirmed with, with some of the paper in, in, in the biology that, uh, from, from Daniel and, and uh, others. Now the last um, item uh, of, of, of uh, results here is, is when uh, having an hybrid classifier where we actually increase, uh, include some of the excited state instead of uh, keeping only the ground state that was provided or, or the lowest energy state that was provided by the device or simulated annealing. And we take uh, X percent uh, of, of the, uh, the, the states and weak classifiers that are provided by the system, uh, by, the, by, the, by the device. Uh, and we consider them uh, for, for an hybrid classifier where we evaluate the average uh, performance on the training folds of uh, these extra state and extra uh, set of weak classifiers. And for each uh, signal efficiency value, we pick the energy state that has the most rejecting uh, discrimination, always on the training fold and not on the testing set. Otherwise, this would be completely biasing. Um, and what we observe is that um, um, this, this was uh, uh, actually uh, insightful, uh, where you have the ground state only in orange. And then if you go to 2%, there is no big difference between uh, the results from the D-Wave system and the simulated annealing. But then when you include uh, more, uh, well, here the simulated annealing has actually an advantage over, over the, the, the solution in D-Wave. And then this, this uh, washes out when uh, you had more uh, excited state um, in, in, in the system. And so this degradation here uh, of, of, uh, of uh, the D-Wave answer versus simulated annealing was traced to, to the, the amount of noise in the device, and this was one of the main feedback to, we had to, to the developer of the machine. Um, and this is uh, recalling how we actually encode a full spin into the, um, into the, uh, in, 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 in the chimera graph of the, of the device. Um, we have a spin, uh, spin chains uh, with uh, strong coupling between, uh, between the chains. And then um, the, uh, the more, the stronger you want the coupling uh, to be with respect to the actual uh, Hamiltonian coupling that you need to put in uh, is this uh, chain strength here. Uh, where zero, there is no, there is no strength, and, and the uh, magnitude of the physical coupling and the chain coupling is the same. Where six is actually um, having the uh, the physical coupling being much smaller uh, than than the uh, the strong coupling, the chain coupling. Sorry, and you see here the results of uh, in simulated annealing of how well we can find the actual true uh, ground state of the problem which is uh, at zero here, as a function of the, uh, the, 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 the strength, chain strength. Um, with increasing chain strength, essentially, you have, uh, uh, you, you have a system that uh, is able to, to, uh, to flip the, the spin currently and then, um, and then, and then properly handle the, uh, the chain to chain coupling. And actually, this plot goes, goes back up there, where if you increase even more the strength, then you wash out completely the physical coupling into the noise of the device, and then, and then you have nothing uh, anymore. So the, um, the, uh, the, 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 the results were run at uh, five, uh, I think. Yeah, yeah five. Um, and, and essentially, here, we still have a discrepancy between the true ground state that is found by simulated annealing and the uh, the, the, the lower, lowest energy state that is returned by the D-Wave system. And that, 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 that accounts for, for, the, um, for the difference in this curve and why um, the, uh, the, uh, the D-Wave answer has a disadvantage versus uh, simulated annealing. All right, with, uh, with this, um, let me go into uh, application outlook and that's something that um, maybe way more interesting uh, to, uh, to people thinking uh, out of the box uh, for uh, how to use uh, quantum devices um, uh, for, for high energy physics, which, which I'm trying to do. 
Um, I had a couple of examples, and I, I, I think I removed them. And uh, one of the main ones that, um, that I think has, uh, has, uh, has uh, high in, uh, potential um, related to high energy physics here, you have a, a depiction of um, hits. So you, you have to imagine that there's a beam colliding at the, at the center, and then you have what, particles coming out of, of, of this collision. And then you have hits in, 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 in a device uh, that, uh, that collects sparsely uh, the position of this, uh, this, uh, this, these particles through, through the detector. And um, this was early work that was done with Hopefield Network. Um, and, then, and then you can do and evolve a system that has this type of, of energy into uh, 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 this uh, definition of, of the, 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 the relation or the clusters of hits that belong together. And, and because, you know, Hopefield and, and, uh, and then the Ising model, they have essentially the same, the same uh, formulation. I think that there is, a, there is a, a room for applying quantum annealing uh, to, uh, to, this, um, to the challenge of charge particle tracking, which is one of the, uh, the challenges uh, in, in high energy physics, uh, not, maybe not now, but in, 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 uh, in the horizon 2025, when we'll have way more intensity in the, the machine and way more tracks and, and, and uh, flat budget in computing, but still uh, need to, uh, to, uh, to produce uh, this type of, of tracks uh, reconstruction from from uh, from the detector, um, and and with this I will I will just essentially um, end with with uh, this this is uh, I think um, an explorati explora exploration paper on the first application of of, of D waves D wave quantum annealing to high energy physics uh, use case. Um, this raises interesting questions more than it answers. Um, and, and um, the, the, the scope of quantum annealing for, for um, uh, as a com computing device for solving this model is, is, is limited but, but powerful, I think, uh, to, uh, to many problems. Um, and within the field of high energy physics, uh, I've, I've removed some of those, but maybe we can uh, discuss offline. Uh, there is potential applicability of, of uh, quantum annealing to other problems that will have high impact uh, in the field. So thank you. So we have time for a couple of questions while the next speaker prepares for the talk. There is one behind you. Hi, uh, thanks a lot. I, so I've got a couple of questions. Uh, the first one is uh, when you're taking a look at something like D-Wave hardware, uh, it generally you know takes a few microseconds in order to get a class and you're if you're pooling over a bunch of uh, boosted decision trees, I'd imagine that the time that you wait would be large compared to what you would get with the feed-forward neural network. Can you comment about the uh, time for classification with your approach? Um, the time plur classification. So the classification is not, the inference part is not done on the, on the D-Wave hardware. So only the training is, is done there. Um, Maybe I can and, and come back to this uh, um, quickly. Um, yes. Um, so you you build this uh, this these two data set with features, run on the wave to get the weights here, and once you have these weights, then then it's a, it's a, it's just purely classical. And then you just evaluate this uh, this uh, strong classifier. Any other quick question? If this is not and I don't want to go into the, the speed up uh, discussion <laughs> because I've been told to not do it. So that, okay, let's uh, thank Jim Rock again and.